Hey guys. As many of you know, I recently picked up a Pentium 2 motherboard and CPU, and I've been doing an installation of Windows 98. Or, to be more accurate, I've done an installation of 98 on this 850 meg IDE hard drive, and now I want to move it to an 8 gig compact flash. Now, the 8 gig compact flash is recognized properly in BIOS but I was having difficulty getting the computer to actually boot from it. Now I've since solved that problem, but as part of my troubleshooting, I finally ended up trying out XT IDE, a project that's been on my list for probably 15 years now. If you're not familiar with it, XT IDE is basically a BIOS extension that allows you to use relatively modern IDE hard drives in older computers. Now, while I don't need it for the Pentium 2, I figured it might be fun to try it out on this old 386. So let's go to the XT IDE Universal BIOS website and see what we need to do. Now, this seems to be one of the main stumbling blocks, at least it was for me. The binary files that you download from this site have to be configured before they're usable. As is often the case, I went back and read the instructions after my first attempt. Since I'm doing this on a 386, I'm going to download the IDE 386.bin. There's also an IDE 386L.bin. Not sure what the difference is. I believe that one offers a couple more options that are not in the standard version. But I'll grab them both. And we'll need that configuration utility as well. I'm going to save those and copy them over to the 386. So over on the 386, I'm going to run the configuration tool and we'll load that binary image. I'm going to go with the IDE 386.bin for now. If I run the auto configure, the tool recognizes that I only have one IDE channel, and it automatically eliminates the secondary. Now there's also an option in there to change the display mode. I may actually try that later on. But for now, let's simply save that file. And we'll exit back to DOS. And now if we compare the file size before configuration and after, yeah, you can see it has indeed done something to that file. Okay, so let's pop back over to Jasmine. Now we need to burn that binary image to an EEPROM. I have my EEPROM burner here with a 27C128 16K EEPROM chip. Now I've already erased that with my UV eraser, but before we try and program it, let's make sure it's actually blank. So I'm going to read the chip. Okay, and I don't think that's blank. Let's run a blank check just to be sure. And no, no, it's definitely not blank yet. You can see all of those hexadecimal values in there. They should all be FF hex, but you see a lot of FEs, FCs, and whatnot. So this chip needs a little more time under the ultraviolet. And now let's try it again. Put that chip back in the programmer. We'll do a read. Uh, 
Okay, that looks a little better. Let's try our blank check just in case. Beautiful. Yep, device is blank. Okay, so I've copied the binary files over from the 386. Let's grab one of those and burn it to this EEPROM. Now, before we do that, though, this is a 16K EEPROM. The image that we're burning is not exactly 16K. So we need to pad out the buffer with zeros. And loading our binary file. And now if I hit program, it will burn to the chip. So we've got a copy of XT IDE fully configured and burned into a ROM chip. I'll cover the window on that ROM chip in a moment or two. Now we need some way to install this chip in the 386. Now the good folks at the XT IDE project have developed a dedicated 8-bit ISA card that you can install in the computer for that purpose. But you can also use an old ISA network card with a boot ROM socket. Okay, so I'm going to use this Genius LAN GE2000 card. We'll just set the IRQ, the IO, and the boot ROM location. If I bring up the stats on this card on the retro web, We have the jumper pinout for the card. Now I currently have this card set to IRQ10, IO port 300 hex. And the most important here is the boot ROM location. Now, of course, we need a location that's not currently in use. From what I've seen, C800 is generally a pretty safe choice. So that's what I'm going to go with here. And as this is a 16K ROM, we need this line right here. OK, so I'm going to jumper this card and put it back into the 386. Now, XT IDE is going to completely take over control of the hard drive. So we need to go into BIOS and make sure there's no hard drive configured. So I'm just going to remove this 850 meg drive. And it's also a good idea to enable shadowing. That copies the contents of the ROM to the RAM and speeds up access astronomically. Okay, so let's reboot and see if XT IDE is loaded. Beautiful, there we go. We've got XT IDE, the banner at the top, and we're booting from that 512 meg compact flash. And if I log into this Linux system, I can still ping Google. So, yep, that network card is still working as it should. Now, this is not really a fair test. This BIOS can actually recognize the 512 meg compact flash card on its own. So, let's try something a little bit more interesting. Longtime viewers may recognize this old CCS286. This is the computer that started this whole channel. The original BIOS in this computer was really very limited. I chose to replace it with a copy of the Quadtel 286 BIOS because it offers way more features than the original. I'm actually going to put the original BIOS back into this computer 
and we'll see how it works with XT IDE. Now, of course, I did have to go back and burn a copy of the XT IDE AT for the 286. I did a similar configuration as we did with the 386. And now I have the corresponding ROM on the network card in this computer. Let's pop into BIOS and we'll take a look around before we test XT IDE. If I scroll through the hard drive options here, you can see we don't have any option for a custom drive. So we're going to set that to none and allow XT IDE to completely take over. Now I have my 48 meg compact flash card in the system. Let's see if it's recognized. And indeed it is. You see we've got a Lexar AT flash. That is the 48 meg drive. Now I tried something a little different with this copy of XT IDE. I chose the monochrome display option. Now I had expected it would set the XT IDE banner to a monochrome, but it seems to have set almost everything to monochrome with a handful of curious exceptions. The splash screen in MSD is in color, but once you're in MSD, everything is in black and white. It's not a big deal, everything still works properly, but I'll probably go back and burn another copy of XT IDE with the standard color scheme. Now, personally, I tend not to use large hard drives in my systems, I try to keep these things as period appropriate as I can, but it's nice to know we have the option should the need ever arise. And if you run into an oddball system that doesn't allow custom drive types, this would absolutely be an option for you. So if you haven't tried it yet, grab yourself a copy of XT IDE, an EEPROM burner, a couple of EEPROMs, and give it a shot. It's a lot easier than I thought. So if you enjoyed this one, feel free to like and subscribe, drop a comment down below, and as always, thanks for watching.